Salute Lou, means you're listening to Sonic Weekly. Welcome back to the show. My name is Grant. With me is the director of all things Sega Saturn and the author of the Rings of Saturn Substack. It's Bo. Hi, Bo. Here we go, buddy. Hey, I am dreaming of an absolution, <laughs> as I always am. Yes, that's true, because every night you come to me and every night you save my life. And so does the star of the show the third host of the podcast, Out of the Shadows, Into the Limelight. It's David the Lurker. Hi, David. Oh, hi, Grant. Hi, Bo. Bo, you sound very excited about about Dreaming of Absolutions. I'm assuming it's because you are 120% back on the Bentley Jones train. I don't know if we talked about it, that he tweeted and was like, hey, I'm coming back to the Sonic fold. Oh. Yeah, he he tweeted. We didn't talk about it. Huh. Hey, I guess I'm talking about it right now, unless let's we want to wait. No. no. Let's not. Please, uh, please inform me. Oh, yeah, yeah. TMI, tell me information. Right. <laughs> it was a, a few weeks. It was right after Sonic X Shadow Generations was announced. And oh. I, so I kind of got lost in the shuffle. But he was like, hey, the exact tweet, of course, I don't remember. But he, he was like, yeah, I'm coming back. And in celebration, I've uploaded two covers of uh can you feel the sunshine one that's in the bentley style and then one that's in the acoustic bentley style oh i need to listen to both of these yeah uh bentley jones he was um he hasn't done anything connected to sonic for many years i think there was like a a little bit of a legal dispute concerning uh royalties sega no yeah i know right it's never happened before for the uh let's say hypothetical person who who doesn't immediately recognize bentley jones as a household name Mm -hmm. but does like sonic what are some of the songs that can be attributed uh Dreams of an Absolution, Silver's theme from 2006. Uh, okay, we could infer that one. So Much More, the theme song of the first Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. Oh. Uh, he also, his first project uh, connected to Sonic was a remix of Eggman's theme on the Shadow the Hedgehog soundtrack, the <sighs> Dr. Robitnik's mix. That is a really good remix of the song. He, that was, uh, I like that one. He hadn't come up with the Bentley Jones moniker. He was credited under Lee Brotherton, which is his real name. Bentley Jones is his stage name. Oh, Lee Brotherton's a better name. But yeah. okay. <laughs> if we get him on the show, I'll let him know. So February 9th, yes, to mark my return to new official projects for Sonic underscore Hedgehog. I'm dropping a very special version of my favorite song from Sonic R. Uh, I said, can you feel the sunshine? But it's actually Diamond in the Sky. I was wrong. I was going to say, if that's your favorite song from Sonic R, I feel like you're a little basic. But okay, Diamond in the Sky, I can appreciate <laughs> Yeah, Diamond in the Sky. It's Diamond in the Sky. I, uh, so uh, I got confused. And because I've over-explained it, you may as well leave this in movies. Uh, <laughs> I was wrong. Let the world know. My favorite um, is Back in Time. <laughs> oh, Back in Time is great. Back in Time is fantastic. What's your favorite, David? You know... I feel like it's sort of a toss up between uh, Back in Time and Diamond in the Sky. Mm. Diamond in the Sky, you just never hear it because, like, if you're supersonic, you're going to hear supersonic racing in that level. Yeah. And by that point, like, yeah, you've probably unlocked supersonic. That's what you want to do. It's the cool thing to do. <laughs> yeah. So that that's that's true. That's that's how I, I think about it. But uh, favorite Sonic R song number one. I'm going to go with number one. Ooh. The credit song, right? Yeah, I, definitely. Right. The day is done. The race is won. Yeah. My life yeah. has only just begun. It has. Just like this podcast has only just begun. Uh, <laughs> truer words have sometimes been spoken. <laughs> it's a tie on the words and the truth, but yeah. Right. right. I, that soundtrack over the last few years, I, I believe, has been like, I, I guess even more than the last few years, it's, it's very, it's much more beloved than it used to be. I remember when it first came out, people were like, ew. Why do you serve words? Why is it Euro pop ish? Mm-hmm. But, you know, that anger, I think, ended in 2001. And everyone was like, actually, Sonic R is a banging soundtrack. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I like it. Yeah. I, I think uh, very easy to appreciate it. Uh, and it goes great on any playlist, Sonic playlist or not. You could just kind of slide it in there and it's like, oh, is this, uh, what is this some late era? Whitney Houston and I. 
And they're like, oh, it's actually it's the Sonic R soundtrack. And they go, oh, yeah, uh-huh. this is happening. Oh, yeah. Hey, so Sonic news this week. Big news. Big, big news. Nothing really. <laughs> no, I don't think there's really any news. The casting of Maria Robotnik. That's medium sized news, right? She she had been cast, I think, uh, but she had but this week she was playing along with the joke of or she it was confirmed maybe, but I think we knew like last week we knew. Okay, maybe I was just behind on my casting. Yeah, it, what ifs? It was uh, last time we recorded. I don't think it was confirmed she was Maria, but everyone assumed it, and she was already making jokes about like, oh yeah, death, yeah. <laughs> yeah. good shot. Uh, and then I guess it was maybe the day after uh, there was it's a post of her sitting on the on the old. What, what are those chairs called? They look like they're, they're called director's, directors chairs, just yeah. director's yeah. chair, even though everyone has them. The actors can sit there also. Yeah. Yeah. So they're not directors. Uh, yeah. It says Maria on it. Not her name. Yeah. Just Maria, which means she's been forced to legally change her name, of course. Yeah. And uh Yeah. Also, she was completely hidden. <laughs> Couldn't even see her face. Right. Yeah, she was wearing her jacket backwards, and it kind of looked like a body bag. So <laughs> yeah. sort of like a winking sort of thing of like, we know you bloodthirsty Sonic maniacs. Can't wait to see mm-hmm. this little girl. So, uh, okay, I'm just going to jump into this. So I uh, have been over the past week playing a lot of games, and then I just added a new one Whoa. to the stack because I think the big news of this week is that the Sonic Mania team, Evening Star, released their new original IP game as a shadow drop surprise during a Nintendo Direct with focusing on their partners, Penny's Big Breakaway. Yeah. That's right. Yes. A breakaway is a yo-yo trick. (laughs) Ah, so you see it's a play on words. Yes. It is definitely a game that I have been enjoying while I've been playing it. I've gotten to only the first couple of levels. As I'm saying, like, I've been kind of playing a lot of different things because I've been accumulating this little GameCube library mm-hmm. to fill in the gaps of my Sonic play through knowledge and, and you know, fill in Sonic Heroes and Shadow the Hedgehog, playing them kind of simultaneously. And though I'm not too far in either of those games yet as well, Shadow the Hedgehog does open with Maria getting shot way more blatantly <laughs> than Sonic Adventure 2 does. And also the menu in Shadow the Hedgehog every selection that you make is a gunshot. So it's like you go to options and it's like, you want to change it so that like the tint is up. It's like, it's, it's pretty wild, Uh, but it's a good time. So a couple of questions Mm -hmm. based off of that. Penny's big breakaway. Have you guys purchased it? Will you purchase it? Have you played any of it? And then I do want to talk about these GameCube games. Yeah. Yeah. Purchased. Yes. Played. No. Will play. Yes. It's on the docket this weekend. My older son and I are, uh, we're going to make an attempt. Yeah, some bonding in gaming. Uh, I will buy it. I have not yet bought it. Cool. Is it a little weird to just release a game like that? It's interesting. I've been thinking about it in my guess, my hypothetical, my just mm-hmm. not knowing anything guess, is that they simply didn't have a marketing budget. Or the budget was small enough that they were like, whatever we were going to spend on marketing, screw it. Let's just spend it on the game development. The work is going to be so good, it'll speak for itself. Release it during a direct because you get special placement in the Nintendo eShop menu. You get that extra attention. Mm -hmm. Even though it is a multi-platform release, so I did buy it on Switch, but, you know, it is 30 frames per second on Switch. It works fine enough. Maybe I would have gone for the 60 frames per second PlayStation or PC version, uh, but I didn't. A couple of things I do want to mention, just based on, I'm only on level 2-2, two, two, but it's cool, but I think the Sonic Mania connection is interesting because it doesn't matter at all if you liked Sonic Mania or didn't like Sonic Mania, because this is not a Sonic clone. There are slopes and you do some rolling, but this is a game that feels like it's Mario Odyssey. Mm. Like it's taking a lot of inspiration from Mario Odyssey, and I would say some of Kirby's Forgotten Land as well. Because it's all about this yo-yo that behaves in a similar way to the hat in Mario Odyssey. Not exactly, but very, very similarly. Way more than it is like, say, even we were talking a couple weeks ago about Roland Rascal. That game, that, that, that game seems way more like it is actually like a Sonic clone, a Sonic adjacent game. Whereas this one, I would say the other thing to go in is that your expectations should be that this is a game for retro platformer enthusiasts, meaning that 
it's not necessarily hardcore, but it is kind of hard. It kind of is for the core gamers. Uh, so I think it is a game that's going to spread through word of mouth. But at the same time, I can't give it like my whole in full enthusiastic, like this game is the best game I've ever played. Two reasons. One, I do kind of just wish it was faster. Ah, oh, man, I wish it was Sonic. I wish you could just move <laughs> faster in the level. That would be so neat. Two, I don't, I don't love the music or the art direction. Oh, so I'm, I'm very interested in this. So it's a T. Lopes joint. Yes. To my knowledge, he hasn't missed. He, Mr. Lopes. He hasn't. Is this a miss? I don't, I don't know if it's a miss. Your, your mileage may vary. I'd be curious to know what you think. But to me, it's like they're, it's familiar sounding in, in a way that's like very noticeably T. Lopes. They're not bad. They do fit, but something about it is just not hooking with me in the same way that Shredder's Revenge or Sonic Mania soundtracks or Streets of Rage or a lot of his other work, because I would agree that he doesn't miss. And I'm hesitant to even call this a miss, but yeah, maybe just the fact that it's a limited amount of tracks because it's the same music throughout all. It's like five levels in World One, something like that, and uh, same track for each level. And it's also kind of like circus sounding. So it just sort of starts on like a queasy foot where you're like, uh, it's a lot of purple and green together. And that's sort of like a weird color combination. And it's cool, I guess. But it's also, Mm. I don't, again, like I don't love it. That said, I like her as a character way more in action and in context than I thought I did based just on the shows where I was even more sort of like, nah, we'll we'll kind of see with this. Uh, And she's very cool and fun. And like, I'm having a good time with it. But. Those are my caveats. One, don't expect Sonic. Two, it's a bit harder. Not necessarily hard exactly, but tricky in a good way, though. It has, a, it has what feels like a very high ceiling to it with the moveset. So it's a game that it feels frustrating that you're not already very good at it. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, you know, I, I expect to play through it, and if it's too hard, my son will give up and want to play uh, Dr. Robotnik's main beam machine. Um, <laughs> but I think... I, I'm probably gonna like listen to the music a lot over the years if it's any good, and uh, I, I'm, I'm curious as to what I'm in for because, like, okay, the Sonic Mania soundtrack, okay, it's great, it's all Sonic songs I know and love, and then it's a couple originals, hey, fantastic. But the Shredder's Revenge soundtrack to me is just like, oh, this guy can do other stuff too, and it's so fucking good. Yeah, I agree more than I disagree, and and that's why I'm hesitant to even like make a firm stand on it because it's like I've listened only a little bit and a lot of times too my views on music will change the more I listen to it so if it goes on to Spotify you know the cyberspace music I think is actually great and kind of gets slept on a little bit um there's a few composers that I feel like have a breakout it's like the white album for the Beatles for sonic composers because you've got Otani who's been there for a while but like you've got a couple other composers in there that are doing some really interesting fun things i i listened to the dlc3 soundtrack while i was working the last couple of days and god damn that is good and yeah it is wild to me that they just had another 46 songs to give out <laughs> for free <laughs> yeah it's wild i was trying to look up a few of the composer names that i've said but uh in particular rintaro soma is uh, a name that i keep seeing on tracks cyberspace tracks that i have been gravitating toward they did uh you know four six fog funk three four constructure you're not going to know them by name uh no (laughs) (laughs) and you're probably not even gonna know like it's you know it's one of the things with frontier but if it was like in a game like where each level had a distinct level theme and it was a bit more memorable in that way then maybe they would hook in differently i don't know hey we've talked on this show a couple of times about the crossovers between Sonic and the Beatles. And we discovered on one of the previous episodes that there was a book called Sonic the Hedgehog and the Beatles. And none of us wrote it. None of, and none of us wrote it. That's right. It was written by uh, somebody named David Childers. He wrote a comparative analysis of the games and the music. So there's no misunderstanding. It is the Sonic the Hedgehog and the Beatles <laughs> that are being compared out. And uh, I've read it. It is, it is a quick read. Uh, it's 100 pages. And in fact, in the conclusion of the book, he does acknowledge that this began as a message board post. So I feel like he's in good company with us then, being that we met on message boards and are totally receptive to this sort of thinking. So he, does, so he doesn't outline in the book which 
like who's the John, who's the Paul. But I kind of think that if you were to do that, Naka's John Lennon, Oshima's Paul McCartney, Yasuhara is George Harrison, and then Azuka's Ringo. <laughs> and then it's like Ringo takes over. Right. Lennon goes to jail. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. I mean, I guess, wait, wasn't it Paul McCartney who got arrested in Japan, though? That's true. That's true. <laughs> For and possession of marijuana. none of them have any, like, post-Sonic hits that you can point to. Like, none of them have wings or, like, a, a long solo career. Right. Uh, right. I'm trying Yasuhara to think. would make the most sense for in terms of talent, I guess. Right. I mean, Ooh, Yasuhara- that sounds too harsh. I apologize to every person involved, involved in that. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Yasuhara, right. I mean, he was involved in some hits, though. Uh, the Jack and yes. Baxter series, the first Uncharted. Absolutely. And and people love to say All Things Must Pass is like the best post Beatles album. Like That's a great as point. As a single whole. So, hey, you know, great that works. Point. And the traveling Wilburys, like, mm-hmm. you know, George Harrison and Yasuhara have like adapted to different right. group structures, whereas Naka's always kind of been like the head of whatever he's been doing and similarly with Oshima. So he doesn't lay that out in the book, but that's that's my headcanon theory. Here's what he does lay out. <laughs> he's, he thinks that essentially the Genesis games are the Beatles canon. OK, Sonic 1 is Please Please Me. Sonic 2 is start, and I, I can go into more detail, but I'm just going to give you the overview first from the table of contents. Okay. Sonic 1 is Please Please Me, the first Beatles album, mm-hmm. which is canonically the first Beatles album and the first one that released in their home country, yeah. uh, England. But American audiences, of course, it was different, which he acknowledges and gets into. <laughs> Sonic 2 is Sgt. Pepper's, the one that most people would say, oh, that's the, that's the peak one. That's the best one. But like the true enthusiasts would say, well, Sonic 3 and Knuckles is Abbey Road. That's what he says, because although you would think with the double, so he says Sonic CD is the white album. Okay. Even though you'd think the double album, Sonic 3 and Knuckles, right. but the Abbey Road double album, you know, the, the medley at the end does sort of like work in terms of, I guess, the Knuckles campaign in Sonic and Knuckles. <laughs> Sonic 3D Blast is Let It Be. I think that one works really well because it's like this weird coda to <laughs> he's like this great run. And then... We just got like this and like a different producer Phil Spector comes in for let it be traveler's tales comes in for sonic 3d blast here's where it gets kind of messy david childers <laughs> author um <laughs> oh, I thought you're like david Napo, david this is where it gets messy i'm like okay i want to skip ahead and just point out like one of the ones that i think is just wrong outright wrong sonic 4 and a hypothetical beatles reunion so i get where he's coming from on this mm-hmm. sonic 4 is like a thing that you want but if it actually happened it would be a disaster he kind of says Sonic 4 is like good. So it's like if it was, if it did happen, it would be exciting. Whatever. Sonic Adventure is supposed to be Plastic Ono Band, All Things Must Pass, and Ram into one. Yeah. So, huh. When, when I first heard about this concept of Sonic and the Beatles, I thought, oh, okay. Well, the 16 bit games are early Beatles and the 3D games are late Beatles. Right. Mm. And Sonic Mania is obviously the red album. <laughs> um, <laughs> Right. So, uh, yeah. Why not? Right? Yeah, it's, you know, all the early ones together. And I, I am really compelled by Sonic 3 and Knuckles being Abbey Road, though. That's my favorite Beatles album and my favorite Sonic right. game. Also, like, okay, if, if we want to get weird, okay, uh, the Genesis, if, if, if we think of Naka, Oshima, and Yasuhara as the Beatles mm-hmm. plus Azuka. Why not? Like he's in there too. <laughs> First off, there is no game with all four of them, right? <laughs> like uh that's and true. Then, like, that's you, good point. What's Sonic and Three and Knuckles? They're not all in there? No, it's uh three and K. I mean Naka's there, Yasuhara's there, Azuka's there. Yes. Uh and Sonic Adventure though is led by Azuka. Naka's there. Oshima's still hanging on. He's still like yeah, he's got credit. Part yeah. of the game. But it's like field map coordinator or something. But yeah. Right. But I mean I he, he seemed to have done more than he maybe did a ton of work on it. Yeah. He did do a ton of work. Like Yasuhara is missing. So Sonic Adventure is like, what if George Harrison had left during the get back sessions? Yeah. And never came back. Yeah. And then they made an album without George. Like, that's what Sonic Adventure is, right? Uh, if you want to get really weird about it. Uh, but oh, wait, you should continue. You haven't gone through the whole okay. table of contents yet, right? I haven't gone through the whole <laughs> table of contents. That's true. Uh, right. Yeah, I, I agree. The way I want to structure the analogy is, 
is different as well. I don't know if it's mm-hmm. the the Genesis games or the early Beatles, because then it's like, what is what is the Abbey Road? Is Sonic Frontiers Abbey Road? I don't know, but I think you've got a really good analog to the White Album with Sonic Adventure. It's a big, beautiful mess. There's yeah. so <laughs> many play styles. There's so many songs. Mm-hmm. Probably would have made sense to cut it down into something more streamlined, but you know, you kind of need the spectacle of it. The problem is that most Sonic games compare favorably to the White Album for that reason exactly. And not many <laughs> Sonic games compare favorably to Abbey Road, which is like Abbey Road is like, oh, it's perfect. There's one tiny miss maybe with Maxwell Silverhammer. Oh, no. What, what, and what even there, about? even Maxwell there. Maxwell Silverhammer, great song. Yeah. Ding, ding. Yeah, there you go. So, uh, and Sonic has, you know, maybe two of those. So it's tough to line them, line it up. Okay, but he says, Mm -hmm. David Childers says, yes, on page 50, oh, that Sonic Adventure 2 is imagine living in the material world and Venus and Mars. So both times, Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2 is John Paul George solo albums, not Ringo. Not Ringo, right. Okay, Venus and Mars. Wait, when did that come out? That is the third Wings album. That is the third one, right. Maybe the fourth Wings album. I because I, I was I was trying to think because because I know there were a couple Wings albums nobody cared about. Okay, Wings goes like this: Wings yeah. goes Wildlife, Wildlife. Then it goes Red Rose Speedway. See, where I think the analogy breaks down is Sonic Adventure Two is good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, it is, you know, okay. I like Imagine. I like Living in the Material World. I like Venus and Mars. All right. I like Venus and Mars. Ah. Venus and Mars is good. Venus and Mars has that song Magneto and Titanium Man. Which is about the X Men characters. Whoa. I think it's one of the only times, probably the only time, a Beatle is saying about X Men characters. Okay, and it was uh, in 1970. I don't know, five. Yeah. Okay. I'm okay. I'm I'm okay. 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 So, Sonic Adventure is George Harrison's first solo album. Adventure yeah. Two is his second solo album. That's right. With same with John. Right. McCartney though, it's it is We're like skipping a bunch of steps right it, yeah, he skips a bunch of mccartney right you're skipping the you're skipping mccartney you're skipping mccartney you're going to ram yeah right which is him and his wife that's who it's credited to that's correct linda and then you're you're jumping with sa2 you're you're jumping over band on the run even which i think is yeah. strange like shouldn't you go isn't that's the one people know like that's i mean that's the biggest one yeah. why are you then going to venus and mars are you like are you saying well sonic adventure 2 isn't as good is it ve- what does he explain it like why those three he he does okay he, all right let's 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 check it out let's go I, to this page 50 right. that we have we have discussed right i'm just uh, a little confused no sure yeah okay he says <clears throat> pinning down fitting comparisons with sonic adventure 2 provides more of a challenge than its predecessor as with the first adventure three albums from each of the beatles creative principles share some interesting similarities but they don't jump out so obviously this time. Mm. The game's enduring criticisms would seemingly create ripe comparisons to the numerous underwhelming offerings released by the individual band members over the course of time. But the specificity of Adventure 2's handling of critical derision and standing among its predecessors and successors makes the process much trickier. Aside from a few irksome gameplay gimmicks and camera glitches, three aspects remain tethered to Sonic Adventure 2's legacy. In terms of self, okay, we're skipping ahead to where it gets comparative. Mm -hmm. No one Beatles solo record can match up with the game's defining traits, but three come close. In terms of self-awareness of its predecessor's shortcomings, John Lennon's Imagine comes closest to mirroring Sonic Adventure 2. Plastic Ono Band wasn't the most accessible of albums, and with relatively anemic sales, especially compared to the band's supposed junior partner, George Harrison, uh, Lennon set out to make his follow-up more commercial. In the blah blah blah. In this regard, the album is something of a spiritual cousin to Sonic Adventure 2. Uh, um, because imagine most definitely refined plastic Ono band for a more common palette. So in the sense that it removed big. <laughs> but yeah. Sonic Adventure is more commercial than Adventure. Like yeah. I'm a little I'm just gonna yeah. say that the these comparisons are bad. There are some comparisons that are good. Okay. And I'm gonna skip ahead with the table of contents because some of them do make sense okay uh this next one doesn't (laughs) (laughs) oh okay sonic heroes and sometime in new york city and back to the egg so no george album here no in fact he says sonic 2006 is dark horse from george harrison dark horse is not a great album but it's not generally even thought of as george harrison's worst album where sonic 2006 is Mm. 
kind of clearly regarded as the worst Sonic game. Right. What what would um, though it isn't in fact, right. but it Harrison, has that reputation. What is Harrison's worst album? Oh, um, back. Uh, it's the like Hawaiian cover. Uh, Gone Tropo or something. That's it. That yeah. was pretty rough. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess when I think of like what's the most derived, it's probably that one. Some people, I I guess Dark Horse. It was just like he was losing his voice, right? He he was yeah. he was not having a good time, but that didn't mean that the album was bad. He just but in, in 06, you need like this big, huge, unfinished thing that they're just like, oh, here's some broken parts. See what you can make of it. Like it's it's the Clash's uh, Sandinista, yeah, more than it is any Beatles thing. I would say it makes more sense for like. Lennon demos so it would be like but in fact he says Sonic Unleashed is double fantasy which is the last Lennon album that he makes alongside Yoko Ono and then Milk and Honey is the demos that comes out a little bit later but double fantasy is the one that comes out in 79 or 80 wait for which Sonic game is double fantasy Sonic Unleashed Sonic because, Unleashed I guess because Yoko Ono is the werehog in this comparison <laughs> oh yeah. Wait, is the comparison only with Double Fantasy, or are there other Beatles uh, album? No, just the just what? Yeah, one. And Sonic Colors is Memory Almost Full, which was um. Yeah. Remember the Paul McCartney Dance Tonight, the one they sold at uh, Starbucks. That was Memory Almost Full, and that's Sonic Colors. That's fast forwarding so so. It's fast forwarding a lot, but it kind of fits because that is like surprisingly good the way. Yeah. Colors. Like, yeah. oh, that's actually good. Okay. I, I agree. I think that's one of the stronger comparisons. And then, I, as I mentioned earlier, Sonic 4 and a hypothetical Beatles reunion. No. And then finally, <laughs> and then finally, Sonic Generations and Anthology. I guess this is critical. When did he write this? This pre or post Mania? Oh, good question. Yeah. First edition is from August 2012. So. Okay. So. Pre-mania. That, that is pre-mania. Pre-mania. And does that imply the existence of a second edition? Or just he was ambitiously? <laughs> Wait, when did Memory Almost Full come out? 07. Oh, that was 2007? Okay. Oh, okay, I see where I was getting confused. What? I was thinking about New, which is from 2013, and I'm like, no, that's different. New's old now. New is old, actually. New is old. <laughs> New is old, folks. New is old. Yeah. Uh, the newest one yeah. is... Not Egypt Station, is it? There's a newer one than Egypt Station. Uh, There's uh, uh, McCartney Three. Yes, that would. Yeah, that's his newest original material. Yeah, I guess, yeah. Um, McCartney Three reimagined, you could say, is even newer than that. All right, all right. So Generations is anthology, which I I kind of get, but like I guess Generations is trying to be the Red and the Blue album, but like the rem like a remixed, remastered version. Yeah, I think Mania works as Red Album. Yeah, and we haven't had our Blue Album yet. All right, so it feels like. Well, I, but that's that's going to my old Beatles is sixteen bit and new Beatles is post sixteen bit. Right, I still think I like better, <laughs> even though even though there's not a clear Abbey Road. Like, there's not a clear no. Like that means Three Knuckles is Revolver. Uh, yeah, Three Knuckles must be Revolver or Sergeant Pepper. But I feel like no. I feel like Sonic Adventure is Sonic is, is Sergeant Pepper in your uh, yeah in your version. Yeah, yeah. Sonic Three Knuckles is R Rubber Soul. Okay, it, well, Rubber Soul and Revolver are kind of essentially a, a double album, more or less. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So Sonic Three is Rubber, Rubber Soul. Soul. Sonic and Knuckles is Revolver. I'm into that. Okay. Because they they those albums sound a lot better when you do them back to back, and they were. The, the sessions were um, pretty close to each other, so it's it's been made. The case has been made that they are of a kind, two of a kind, even. Yeah. Well, so anyway, so that's the uh, that's the the basic that's the table of contents. All right. So that's the end, as laid out by David Childers. Okay. And then that's the end. And I mean, here's the thing: like, if if you read the book, it's it's what you kind of got a sense of is like it's it's sort of just recapping. Well, what is Sonic 3D Blast? <laughs> what is Let It Be? What things do they have in common? Okay, and then moving on. Ah, uh, yeah, like the analogy kind of breaks down. You don't have like killer singles that were like single level games or something. The <laughs> Game Gear games, right? He tries to make oh. that point of like Green Hill Zone, please, please, or, or sort of like um, I saw her standing there. Of like, it's it's a very trying to not use the word iconic, but fine, iconic. Uh, opening sound, opening level, mm -hmm. or scrap brain zone is twist and shout. Um, 
Sure. So is Love Me Do the Tokyo Toy Show demo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And who's Pete Best in all of this? Whoa, um, that's a good question. And who's Tom Kalinske? <laughs> is Tom Kalinske George Martin or um, maybe he's Mal Evans? He could be Eric Clapton. Uh, we need Tom Kalinske's son to go back and remaster all the... <laughs> all the classic games, yeah. Or maybe, yeah, maybe... George Martin's son is uh, the white, uh, Evening Star and Taxman. Right. Yeah. And stealth. Right. Son- Sonic. Yeah. God. Yeah. Okay. I guess I feel like it really, the, the comparisons kind of go off the rails. Sonic 2006 should be McCartney 2. Right. McCartney 2 is, has come around more recently as people appreciating it. Mm-hmm. But for the longest time, people were like, this is a joke album. This is a terrible, horrible album. Temporary secretary, go fuck yourself, Paul McCartney. This is insulting. <laughs> I feel like Naka had a lot of temporary secretaries <laughs> over the years. Uh, isn't there a story about John Lennon was listening to the radio when he heard the other song, not temporary secretary, uh, coming up, coming out, whatever it is. And he was like, whoa, blimey, that's Paul. <laughs> right. And he got very... And that sort of pushed him back into making music. That, and I think he almost died and went, maybe I should uh, make some music before I die. And then he died. Uh, both are true. Yes. Both are, um, yeah. Both, so, both, I, I recall that story of Lennon hearing Paul on the radio. Yeah. And wanting to. And coming up is a great, great tune with a funky guitar. And you could see how that would get Lennon going because uh, in his yeah. last album, Double Fancy, there's a fair bit of funky guitar in songs like stepping out sounds like coming out while we're doing beetle theories yes so you know that song just like starting over yeah this is john sending a message to paul that they should get the beatles back together and my proof david if you wouldn't mind pulling up the lyrics okay let's let's pull up the lyrics uh my proof is in the verses all right intro uh are not necessary <laughs> no verse one not even verse one verse two You want verse two? Okay. Yeah. Every day we used to make it love. Why can't we be making love nice and easy? It's time to spread our wings and fly. Don't let another day go by, my love. Another day was a Paul single. Ooh. My love was a Paul single. So it'll be just like starting over, right? Like they're starting the Beatles over. (laughs) Yeah. And then keep going. Right, the bridge, yeah, or yeah, I don't know. Why don't we take off alone, take a trip somewhere far, far away? We'll be together all alone again, like we used to in the early days. What early days? Right. And also, we know that they spent a lot of time together alone in hotel rooms writing songs, you know, and they took trips to Paris where they wrote songs like What's the One About Money that's kind of annoying? Can't Buy Me Love. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Can't buy me. It's a fine song. It's a fun, yeah. It, it's one of the songs. It's. Oh, I think it's in the top half of the. I think it's top half. Watch it. Yeah, somewhere around the middle. <laughs> so it's it's right around the equator. I'd put it. I if we're dividing dividing them into the good ones and the bad ones, it's one of the good ones. Right. I but, uh, I don't think there's many bad ones though. Oh no, this is where you're wrong. <laughs> You think how well how well what ratio do you think is good to bad? It's it's a high ratio, but I'm saying like forget about comparisons to other bands. Just sure within the Beatles, there's a top half and a bottom half. Oh, okay. You're, you're okay. So we just we're grading on a curve. Yeah, it's it's on the Beatles curve. I've been sitting here trying to decide what's Bell and Wonderworld. Is it <laughs> <laughs> real love? Uh, no, no, it can't be. Real love is good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Bell and Wonderworld is like, you remember that time when Paul McCartney was like, nobody was asking him anything. He just came up to a reporter was like, hey, just so you know, me and John Lennon and the boys used to whack off all the time. <laughs> we just sit in a room and jerk off our willies. <laughs> Somebody would call out the name of a woman. We'd go, woohoo, and just jerk it. <laughs> And that's how we wrote most of our music. Oh. We just did a little diddly widdly and then we took it over to the skiddly widdly. Is this is this a famous I, I, Yeah, uh, how did that get to Bell and interview? Wonderworld? That's a, <laughs> that anecdote is Bell and Wonderworld. Okay. Bell and Wonderworld is 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 Paul telling the world that 
when he did in I, I think it was like during lockdown it, i feel like it was during 2020 wait is this and a real it, thing here? But this is real yeah oh i the line I, call out the name of a woman is <laughs> <close enough. laughs> Just like anyone that's true. That's, uh, that's the... Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Anita, darling. Oh yeah, yeah. Just like what? I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. They didn't have pornography, David. They uh, they just <laughs> had to use their imaginations. And guess, uh, was this was a different time. while they were beetling, or was this before they hit it big? Which would you prefer? Do you want them to be? <laughs> yeah. Do you want them to be fourteen? Do you want them to be 15, 16, 17? Well, like, they're pretty young. How, how old were they when they were performing in Hamburg, Germany? <laughs> That's a good question. No, they, they're in their... Tw- George was young enough to where it was an issue. Oh, right. So they must have been, like, 21-ish. Okay. Right. I, I, and then he was, like, 19 or 18 or 17 or 16, <laughs> 15, 14, 13. Uh, George was eight years old. He's tails. <laughs> oh, guys. So he wasn't involved. He was Right. Okay, so with the Sonic cast, I guess it's, like, Sonic is naka shit wait I, oshima's tails yeah uh, that doesn't that doesn't yeah, work being knuckles doesn't work that doesn't nah. work. Uh, eggman eggman yeah maybe yasar is eggman diabolical yeah he, he creates those traps yeah exactly <laughs> i'm just thinking about like right well i mean like because after they made it big uh-huh they hypothetically and also at some point like john lennon got married yeah to a woman and i don't right. know if he's still just like yeah, I'm just jerking off with the boy. <laughs> I, 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 I would imagine it was something that when they were younger, right. but I don't know. I don't know. But I, it would be. It's weird either way. <laughs> it it's weird, weird either I'm, way. Like I'm not saying, yeah, it's great. I'm like, what do you? I don't understand it either way. It's fine. How about Ringo is Knuckles? Ringo is Knuckles works. All right. If you if you start with Ringo is Knuckles, mm-hmm. then it's like I feel like John is. I feel like John works as Knuckles. <laughs> well, I mean, Ringo as Knuckles works because they're both like dumb, I guess. But like, but, he's, but you with Sonic, it's like John. It's a two. Who's Sonic's equal? And I feel like that's Knuckles more than it is Tails mm-hmm. or Amy, even or Shadow. I guess it could be Shadow. Who, who's in the original concept art where Sonic's actually in the band? Right, Sonic was a singer. A singer. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. I mean, they all sing, though. Yeah. Uh, anyway. If the listeners have stuck with us this far, then, uh, hey. <laughs> is this our new lowest rated episode? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are crazy. This is gold. This is, uh, this is AM gold. For that sliver of the Venn diagram of, so there's the three of us. We know there's David Childers and mm-hmm. those four <laughs> other people who are really into Sonic and the Beatles. This is like the culmination of, of your life so far. <laughs> Right. Yes, as one of those people, I would say yes, one hundred percent. I would also say that yes, we do. We are aware that Gen Z thinks the Beatles are quote unquote cringe. What? And we find that hurtful and wrong. No, but I, I think it's going to come back around. Like in my lifetime, it's been like no, 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 they're overrated. To no, actually, they're good again. Yeah, I found something. I think I found the original message board post no of david childer yeah i've kicked this idea around for quite some time i've decided to gamble a bit and share it with you uh in short i see a big time parallel between the sonic series and the beatles the genesis sonic game serves the beatles time together as a band while the next gen games act as the subsequent solo albums put out by the beatles shit what is the board yeah it's uh sonic retro may 5th 2009 oh it's your board yeah, wow. here, because it says Sonic 1, Please Please Me. Wow. Sonic 2 is Sgt. Pepper. CD's The White Album. 3 and K is Abbey Road. But while I was scrolling, scrolling through, I noticed something. Uh, what, what was uh, Sonic Heroes in yours? Ah, in the book, Sonic Heroes is uh, Sometime in New York City and Back to the Egg. Okay. Originally, Sonic Heroes is, are those two and Dark Horse. Interesting. So what's Sonic 2006? Sonic 06 is Gone Tropo by George Harrison. <laughs> that works better. He, he, that honestly is a bit, although I think he should stick with the theme of like, uh-huh. pick the worst one from each of them. Yeah. So it's McCartney 2, it's Gone Tropo, uh-huh. and then it's, uh, what would be the worst Lennon album? I mean, maybe that like 
noise album yeah you've got that he did with uh the naked cover unfinished what is it unfinished song? unfinished business and um, yeah that's what sonic 06 is right whatever it's, it is it's one something of unfinished wow actually no it's called two virgins what the hell are we talking about right Un- isn't it called two virgins well it, it has a subtitle it's unfinished something volume one and volume two. Oh, oh you're right so there there's two and the first one is two virgins right that's the one that they recorded after they after john and yoko first uh <laughs> Sonic 3 and Knuckles together. No, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> they found their lock on technology between themselves. Right. This person, are, I guess in this early version, it's 2009, Sonic 4 hasn't come out yet. It says the hypothetical We Wear Sonic 4 is the anthology singles instead of uh, just a, a vague, like, hypothetical reunion. Uh. I mean, because technically, I guess the anthology singles are the closest thing to a reunion that exists. So, yeah, it feels like you would do that. Still, I'm not into the idea of Sonic 4. I think he came up with it before anyone realized Sonic 4 would be terrible. So, right. I think so, too. And he yeah. just couldn't let it go. And I think Superstars is a better match. Yeah. Right. I mean, because Superstars, it's like, yeah, like Oshima's there. Azuka's there. So that's um, right. That's Paul. And Ringo yeah, coming back yeah. together, and they're like, "I guess we'll yeah do this again." And they're now and then. Now and then. I mean, that is what it is, right? Because they're rummaging through like the old concept art, so it's it's the old demos. It's an old John Lennon demo. It's old Sonic concept art. We're pulling that out. Yeah, right. We got the technology now. Right, and then like I guess oh, one of those levels must be a tribute to Yasuhara's level design, right? <laughs> the bosses so. are <laughs> the boss. It make yeah, Superstars makes way more sense as as a now and then analogy. Sonic Frontiers mm-hmm. is McCartney three, and <laughs> okay, probably all of the Paul stuff from two thousand forward. Uh, Ringo's solo albums don't factor at all in into these analogies. Yeah, I mean he's got he's got a couple that have some Ringo. There's Ringo. There's a uh, what is it? Good night, Vienna. Vienna. Yeah, basically those two. <laughs> basically those two. Yeah, right. Because his first two solo albums are strange, right? Like one of them's like, is it a country album or something? I don't right. remember. Yeah, and yep. And so Ringo is oh, it's 1973, and he's getting a little help from his friends. And then mm-hmm. the second one, he's got a little more help from his friends. Yep. And then and then Ringo the fourth came out eventually, and then he uh, played drums on stuff uh he made some ms paint art he he was he was in give my regards to broad street <laughs> you know ringo's around we, we around. like ringo around. peace yeah. and love good ringo uh, hey bo is there any uh sega saturn news that we should be paying attention to this week before we wrap up well you remember last week uh we put out the now playable demo of Fighting Force, the unreleased Saturn game, and we gave the Sonic Weekly listeners the early preview of the extended demo of Reloaded, the dreadful but unreleased Saturn game. Uh, So you're caught up if you've been listening to Sonic Weekly. Uh, Coming out next week, I think, I mean, they're going to do Thunder Force 5. Got a prototype demo of that. I don't know if there's any partisans of the Thunder Force series here. It's a, it's a shooter. Or we've got three dirty dwarves from the bakers of Echo the Dolphin. This is a strange little Saturn game that I think most people experienced through... Oh no, am I getting quieter? Damn it. <laughs> it's a strange little Saturn game that I think most people experienced through a uh, the Sega Screams demo disc. And it's it's like heavy, heavy into the lore of the Bronx, New York. Ooh. So it's like this post-apocalyptic Bronx, New York. And uh, I found some unknown passwords for that game that uh, actually make it kind of a better game. So there you go. Rings of Saturn update. Hopefully you guys can hear it. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Yeah. Who knows if that's going to make it in? Yeah. Yeah. Right. We'll just, he'll just boost the, boost the volume of it. For David and I, it was very, a little difficult to hear. Yeah. Oh, son of a... <laughs> I, I didn't touch anything. It was the, the mic just like moved down. Oh, is that it? Damn it. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it was drifting away. It was, yeah, yes, yeah, kind of like how the Beatles started to drift apart. <laughs> right. That was famously how they they just sort of were like, yeah, we're maybe, yeah, okay. So yeah, I 
I'm excited I found this post, but since I found it, let's see. Um, did anyone say anything interesting about it? Yeah, he, he posted this huge thing. Was the, were there any replies? Oh, there's a oh, there's a few replies. We got a how many pages is the thread? It's just two. Um, oh, there uh, somebody. I don't know if I should say their name. Probably doesn't matter. It's not the real name. It's an internet name. Tenaru. I would have to say the only Beatles solo career that resembles the development of the Sonic series is Ringo's. Hmm. Just because this stuff is the only material I find uninspired enough to compare to, say, Sonic 2006. <laughs> Remember, even Gon Trapo had an old Beatles to Circles, a song that would wind up as a theme song to a movie, Dream Away in Time Bandits. So, so they propose that Sonic Jam is Sentimental Journey, a cover album. Uh, Sonic R is, how, how do you say that? Boku? Boku of Blues? I think that's it. Right. You Coops? That's the country one. <laughs> so then Sonic Adventure is Ringo. Yeah. Okay. As they I mean, call it, the defining moment. Yeah. I mean, because that, that's the one that people are like, hey, it's also technically the closest they got to a Beatles reunion while they were all alive. Because all four of them are there, but not all four of them play on one song. Uh, Sonic Adventure 2, Good Night Vienna. Okay. Heroes is Ringo's Roto. <laughs> I, you know what? I have no idea what even's on that album. Shadow the Hedgehog is Ringo the Fourth. Oh six is Bad Boy, and then for some reason Silver's part in Oh six is Scoose the Moose. Secret Mouse. Rings is Stop and Smell the Roses. Like at this point, I have no idea what Ringo's doing on these albums because yeah, I've never heard any of them. I've never heard them either. Sonic Unleashed on the Wii is Old Wave, and Unleashed on the HD version is this time. Time takes time. Hmm. So I am, yeah, I had no idea. I will say, I will say that he he knew he was onto something with Sonic Two and Sgt. Pepper. Yeah, I feel like that makes a lot of sense. It does, and the rest is all to justify because they are they are both like the conve- like the convenient go to answer for the normie. And they're not wrong. The Normie's not wrong. Sgt. Pepper's a great album. Sonic 2's a great game. Yeah. They deserve to be great all, greatest of all time status. It just so happens there happens to be something that's even better. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you got to experience the whole thing. It's a bit bigger. It's a bit more unwieldy, a little more ambitious. That's where Sonic 3 and Knuckles is Abbey Road. Yeah. I do see, I, I do see to, you know, to Bo's point earlier of like, eh, whatever. Abbey, Abbey Road could be Sonic Adventure. It could be one or the other, right. I think. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think there's arguments to be said for all of it, right? Because it's, A, it could be anything, right? The early, later Beatles being all of Sonic makes sense to me to some degree. Yeah. Uh, Sergeant Pepper definitely just works as, as Sonic 2. I, I don't... Right, there's a post here that says... However, right, I would argue that Sonic or Sonic Sergeant Pepper is somewhat overrated. And actually, I think Sonic 2 is really. And I feel like, huh, you're kind of they're both right, but it's like reinforcing the point. Yeah. 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 But it, it, overrated doesn't mean bad. No, because this is don't get me wrong. I love Sonic 2, but I don't get why right. people vote it as the best Sonic game. Likewise, I don't believe Sergeant Pepper is the Beatles best. Yeah. And it isn't it like Sergeant Pepper is definitely just hey, they've become a studio band. They're experimenting. It, I'm sure like the moment it came out, it was wild to listen to compared to other things. But, you know, they continue to refine their craft and that's how you get Abbey Road. Yeah. Same thing with Sonic 2. Like, wow, wild. But then Sonic 3 and Knuckles. So do you think like Hilltop Zone is fixing a hole? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Lovely Rita is Oil Ocean. Yeah. And I think... Uh... <laughs> But I think, like, with a little help from my friends, is Chemical Plant. Yeah. And right. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds is not Aquatic Ruin. It's, it's Casino Night. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. So if Emerald Hill is the title track, Sgt. Pepper's, is the reprise then Hilltop because of the reused? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. Is A Day in the Life Metropolis because it's so much longer than the rest of the song? Yeah. I don't know. It doesn't have a real high peak, though, I don't think. Right. Yeah. That the whole because the last several acts are all one act each, mm-hmm. you could sort of say that Metropolis and like Sky Chase, Wing Fortress, Wing Fortress Death Egg are all one huge end set piece. There you yeah. go. And that's all a day in the life. Unless Death Egg is just the, the, 
the inner circle, you know, that three second loop. <laughs> the vinyl loop yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> the Silver Sonic fight then is the final chord. Yeah. The like chord that like lingers for a while. The Death Egg robot is the blank space. Uh huh. Strawberry Fields is Hidden Palace. <laughs> yes. Should have been on the album. Penny Lane is um, Genocide City. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, this has been fun. We're dumb. We do <laughs> dumb episodes sometimes. Uh, but you know what? This was fun. And hey, if you know David Childers, mm-hmm. uh, or if you are David Childers, uh, you should get in touch with us. Whoa. Which uh, is an email address that you're going to hear about right freaking in a moment. Oh, yeah. That's right. If we can get him on, we're going to do another Sonic and the Beatles episode, listeners. <laughs> Buckle up, you have not heard anything yet. (laughs) We'll be able to dive in deep because, hey, it's been a few years since that book came out. We've had other games. We've had Lost World. We've had Forces. We've had Mania. I want to know what this frontier is equal to David Childers. Hey, yeah, David Childers, if you're listening, hey, thanks for listening to another episode of Sonic Weekly. Or maybe the first one. Maybe you found it because you searched your name in Spotify. Who doesn't do that? We all do it. Let's admit it. And but but before you you know continue your searching of your name on Spotify, you could of course subscribe to this podcast. But it doesn't have to be on Spotify. It can be on whatever podcatcher of choice you have. There's Apple Podcasts. There's Podcast Attic. There's other ones. Maybe one day I'll remember more than three. But that's fine because I can't list them all. But I can stop for that horn. Ah, yeah. And of course, hey, you want to get in contact with us, that email address is sonicweeklypodcast at gmail.com. Send us a line. Tell us uh, what you think of the show. Tell us what you want us to talk about on the show. Or simply ask for a link to our Discord server. That's right. If you want to talk to like-minded Sonic the Hedgehog fans, you can go ahead, slide in there. We'll say hello and uh, we talk about Sonic after that. Let's see, what am I forgetting? I mean, aside from the thanking at the end. Oh, right, the YouTube channel, at Sonic-Weekly. You can subscribe to that as well if you want. Hey, you can add us on Twitter. We're just at Sonic Weekly. Maybe we'll read some tweets, or you could use a hashtag, but I haven't come up with one. Just add us. If a bunch of people add us, we'll read some tweets. It'll be a fun time. Add us about the Beatles. Tell us what your favorite Beatles deep cut is. Tell us... What Beatles song reminds you of Ice Cap Zone? Uh, tell us. <laughs> Leave a comment on Spotify. Leave a comment wherever. We'll read the comments. Right. And send an email. Spotify has comments. Uh, yeah. yeah. Of course, we got to thank uh, Smoothies for the edit. He's the one who, uh, he's, you know, he is our George Martin, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good analogy right there. Yeah. It's the best one we've made this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Thank you, Smoothies. Thank you both for uh, all of your analogies. Uh, and, and Grant, thank you for Granton. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 